Hello everyone, I am Brian, the Ranting Usher, and I'm going to continue my review of the revival of Twin Peaks. I've already given a very broad review of episodes 1 and 2. In this video, I'm going to go much further in depth about the first two episodes, and 3 and 4 as well. If you are a huge Twin Peaks fan, and you have not yet seen the revival, major spoilers lie ahead in this video. For those of you who are still with me, pour yourself a damn fine cup of coffee and let me talk you to your seat. We finally get the reunion between Laura Palmer and Agent Cooper that was prophesied in the finale of season two. Although their conversation is brief, it is dripping with just enough nostalgia to keep the original spirit of the show alive and satisfy veteran fan bases while revealing Laura's spectral self. We already knew Laura Palmer was a ghost, but seeing her deadlights, so to speak, is still shocking to audiences, whether we were expecting it or not. It is unknown where Laura goes when she is sucked out of the Black Lodge. I'm speculating she is absorbed into the glass box. Perhaps that is her punishment for revealing her essence. Should she find her way out, Laura Palmer might find herself in the real world again, even though she's dead. I'm excited to see how her continuing story ties in with what's going on with Evil Coop in South Dakota and Deputy Hawk's missing link in Twin Peaks. The evolution of Philip Gerard's severed arm has left me awestruck. Obviously, David Lynch needed a replacement for Michael J. Anderson, which makes this reversed phrase seem like an odd coincidence. How the little man from another place could have transformed into an electrically charged talking tree is one of several mysteries within the Black Lodge that will never be solved. That's what makes it so amazing. The idea of the tree also having a doppelganger is absolutely spellbinding. The only thing I can surmise is that the arm is on a cycle, enabling him to evolve every 25 years or so. Seeing as how the Black Lodge is a place of unspeakable power, and the evil that resides there far surpasses our comprehension, if it's true what I said about a cycle, I can't even begin to imagine what the arm will look like 25 years from now. I want to talk about Agent Cooper and how he can possibly find his way back to himself. The log lady said there is one thing missing having to do with Cooper, but as we all know, a whole person is comprised of several components, not just one. Like solving the mystery of Laura Palmer, I believe multiple pieces of a scattered puzzle all have to come together before the good Coop achieves his self-actualization. Those things most likely include the following. Drinking massive amounts of black coffee, getting his shoes back, getting to know himself through Sonny Jim, who I believe is a part of Coop that he left behind in the lodge just as the arm is a part of Philip Gerard slash Mike, reclaiming the ring Dougie Jones left behind, the evil Coop returning to the lodge, being found by Hawk, being reinstituted into the Federal Bureau of Investigation before finally venturing back into Twin Peaks and making tapes for Diane. I don't know when these will occur, or how close they need to be to bring Cooper back to his senses, but that's all right, because Twin Peaks was never about the destination. It was always about the journey. So far, I am enjoying the journey and all its multi-layered Lynchian oddities very much. The Return has some of the greatest acting performances I've ever seen in a TV series. The cinematography is visually stunning, the suspense is riveting, and I can't wait to see where it can go from here. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Ranting Usher. If you enjoyed this, 
feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.